go into a city that's set on the hill. Its ruler and maker is the Lord God above. Oh, I'm going to a city and it's set on a hill. And someday I'll be in heaven and there'll be no sorrow there. Oh, I'm going to a city. It lies four square. The gates are made of jasper and I'll see Jesus. Hello, everybody. God bless you today. This is Susan Puzio, and I want to welcome you to the Prophetic News Radio. And we are in the end times. And truly, the days are evil. They're good for us, for the born-again believers, but not so much for the unbelievers. I wanted to let you know about our website, propheticnews.com. We have a YouTube channel, Prophetic News TV. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Rumble. We're on BitChute. We're all over the place. Praise the Lord. We thank God for all these opportunities. Also, we have our two books on Amazon. Our very important book, Paula White, President Trump's Pastor. Why would he in the world, why would he have Paula White as his pastor? Very strange, very strange. And Seed Faith, Can a Man Bribe God? So that's available for you. And if you'd like to email me, you can email me, Susan, at propheticnews.com. Also, we have a very special guest with us today, our brother and our friend, James Sunquist. Hi, James. Susan, a delight to be with you again. It's I always say it's been too long, and but it hasn't been too long, really. It's been uh, December we did the show, and then going back a, a, a couple centuries to the first show we did together. And <laughs> so this is sequel 59, maybe, I don't know, or well, 77. <laughs> well, there's always so much to talk about, especially when you're talking to someone that's written what is it now, a thousand-page book on Calvinism? Yes, in Neo-Calvinism, uh, Kuiper Calvinism, uh, Augustine, uh, and they really are all beads on the same uh, string, if you would, and you can connect them together. They don't always agree, but there's connectivity on so many levels. And the more I studied it, Susan, the more astonished I am how timely it is in terms of what's going on as we approach within a heartbeat of all of the nations of the world surrounding Israel that Augustine held in such contempt, not just privately or in his church, but publishing it in his book in the City of God. And the and it wasn't just oh, I don't like him, we you know, disagree, but uh, let's just try to go along, get along. Uh and and uh, and what he said about women, and I write to pastor after pastor and authors, scholars, professors, and a number of denominations that have Calvinism uh, and Augustine in, in their roots. Uh, and it's getting to the point, Susan, where the uh, whole idea of the replacement th- theology isn't some kind of a a doctrine that's on the shelf, or it's a peripheral doctrine, or it's uh, one of those non-essential doctrines. Uh, it's getting to the point where now, with ecumenism, um, and I've had these debates and conversations online with a number of Roman Catholic priests and authors as well, and uh, the uh, uh, it, what I've I've noticed is that if you want to have a one-world religion, one-world government. I can't think of a better way to pull it off than than to have everybody say, "Well, we champion Augustine. He, he's the uh, f- really the foundation of the Roman Catholic Catholic Church, and he's championed by even the most conservative Baptist churches, yeah. uh, Southern Baptist. Uh, so you think, well, they they would never sign on with this." But they exalt them, and they even form institutes in some of their uh, their Baptist seminaries, if you really want to call it Baptist anymore. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, true. And so I'm thinking, man, the uh, if everybody, if you all want to come together and be one in spirit, the wrong spirit, of course, but yeah, um, the and 
that without it, we're not don't have the one world government yet, but uh, the Lord has ways of putting things just in place so that uh, that once the twinkling of an eye happens and we're caught up, it can set in motion at the speed of light almost the uh, all those principles of as that we all join together because of Augustine. Um, uh, I can make a powerful case for th- that's uh, how we can pull it off. Um, but when you dig under the covers and see all of these, I had 25, now I have 28 reasons, and, and before um, I'm done, it'll be up to 50, so we have to keep doing uh, sequels. Susan. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important. We're, we're, our show today is 25 reasons why they call him St. Augustine. Of course, he's not a saint, but they call him St. Augustine. He's not a Christian, and we'll go over those. Yes, uh, you were indeed. going to give a brief synopsis of his hatred of women that actually quote scripture imagine that yes and the uh and this is hatred of of the jews uh it's really two prongs off the same tuning fork in many ways and and because you're you're a woman i can can you imagine when i read what he said about women him walking in with uh priscilla and aquila's house in the first century uh, and, and saying what he said about women to Priscilla, who corrected Apollo for uh, his false doctrine and teachings and straightened him out. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, here's what he would say to Priscilla and all women that are Christian, whether they are or not. So are you ready, Susan? Um, here goes. Uh, this first, the, yeah, the, about the, uh, the Jews, just one line, will, and then I'll give you three or four uh, quotes from him from his on women first uh, about uh, the Jews he says serpents wearing the image of Judas uh, the Psalms and prayers are the brain of donkeys they are incapable of understanding scripture the Jews deserved death but were destitute destined to wander the earth to witness the victory of the church over the synagogue St. Augustine 354 to 430 and in all fairness, Augustine didn't uh, technically launch the Eucharist, the Roman Catholicism, um, and but and then later it was called transubstantiation, as there are several people from uh, uh, the, in the didact, Saint Ignatius, Justin Martyr, Arrivan, uh, um, um, and Cyril of Jerusalem and Ambrose um, between uh, 60 A.D. and 387, that was before him. But the biggest difference, Susan, is the fact that Augustine weaponized uh, uh, Christianity, weaponized the sacraments and the the doctrines, so that if you opposed it, you either be tortured or uh, killed or forced into to to become saved. And then the Crusades and the conquistadors in South America just took his mantle, his baton, and they just passed it on. And it, there won't be an end until the even of the tribulation, where all the nations are surrounded, to try to take out uh, literal Israel, not not some figurative Zion. Um, and his idea that the the amillennialism would launch that there is no that they were in the kingdom of God on earth now, and he was a Neoplatonist, which said that that everyone can be perfect and happy on earth uh, uh, throughout their life. Um, and there's there's not this. Uh, a thousand year uh, reign and there's not um, the the millennium as we understand it that after the the rapture and the tribulation and then the millennium comes in with the thousand year reign of Christ after he descends on the earth but they they f- f- figure t- he makes things figurative to fit his his tune but turns right around uh, and makes it literal to destroy the Jews and, and any heretics, and then, uh, of course, Calvin took his baton pass, and you know all the story on him. That's about part of the book. But anyway, here's the, uh, some quotes of what he said about women yeah. um, and what he would have said to Priscilla yeah. in the first century. Um, I don't see what sort of help a uh, woman was created to provide man with if one excludes procreation. <gasps> If woman is not given to man for help in bearing children, for what help could she be? Uh, to till the earth together? Uh, if help were had needed for that, man would have 
been a better help helping for man. Uh, the same goes for comfort in solitude. How much more pleasure is it for life and conversation when two friends have uh, lived together than when a man and a woman cohabitate? Next quote. Woman was given to man. Woman was uh, who was a small of small intelligence <laughs> and who perhaps <laughs> still lives more in accordance with the promptings of the interior flesh than by the superior reason. <laughs> Is this why the Apostle Paul does not attribute the image of God to her? Two more quotes, uh, and you're going to, the, the women listening to this show, it, it's just going to, they're going to be uh, forming a riot squad, maybe, but here goes. <laughs> the the woman together with her own husband is the image of God, so so that the whole substance may be one image. But when she is referred separately to her quality of helpmate, uh, which regards the woman herself alone, then she is not the image of God. But as regards the man alone, he is the image of God, as fully and completely as when the, the woman, too, is joined with him in one. Last quote, uh, watch out that uh, she does not twist and turn you to, for the worse. <laughs> what difference does it make whether it is in a wife or in a mother, provided we nonetheless avoid Eve in any woman? What is the difference whether it is in the wife or a mother? It is still Eve, the temptress, that we <laughs> must be aware of in any woman. Now, if you read those quotes and not say who the source is, um, you, you would say, man, we can't have that person be a pastor, let alone it sounds uh, send familiar, them though. It sounds for, familiar. for counseling. <laughs> um, uh, and it's, now, now, if you needed a definition, Susan, for a control freak, abusive pastor, yeah. uh, j just uh, misogynistic against women and yeah. everything, I mean, could you... Uh, what, what more would you need to meet the formula? Uh, and yet l he's exalted uh, for hundreds and uh, hundreds of years. Yes. Uh, about what was it be about um, 1600, um, 1700 years right in there around there. Uh, and and so uh, on top of that, one more uh, quote from um, from an Israel news agency uh, called Kahila in uh, Israel, in Jerusalem, um, the, and one of the uh, leaders there, her, the name is Shira Sorka Ram, said this, the dogma of replacement theology, that's the, uh, the church replacing um, Israel, and the other thing is that the, 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 the bat, infant baptism replacing uh, uh, the circumcision. Uh, anyway, reading it again, the dogma of replacement theology has probably brought more sin and evil in the world than any other Christian doctrine. Uh, that's quote, close quote. Um, and I'm speaking, and this is in the book, uh, my book. I would only add that it is it has probably produced the most persecution and deaths than any other Christian doctrine in church history. And this is just up through World War II and doesn't even address the number of Jews that will be killed in Israel during Armageddon in the end times. Yeah. Uh, is that uh, just shell-shocking or what, Susan? Yeah, it is, it is, it is. It's, it's, it, even with uh, Augustine, apparently he wasn't married and he never fell in love. I think he, he did fall in love at one point, but... Uh, to say, of course, uh, God gave women to man, so we were a gift. <laughs> That's how I see it. It's not a curse. And, you know, uh, yeah, well, not really. but uh, not, not really, right? Yeah, the thing is, how can anybody tell me that I can't tell people about the one who saved me, the one who died for me, the one who rescued my life from the pit of destruction. How could I stay silent? It's, it doesn't make any sense. It, but Augustine and, lives on in, the, in, in, many, in many church circles, and it's very sad. I get a lot of attacks for this. Why do you keep 
you know, taking on and dividing the body and attacking uh, these fathers of the faith uh, because they've been dead for 1,500, 500 to 1,000 or 1,500 years. And and, and I, I would say, yes, they've been dead, but their doctrine... No, the doctrine's all, not dead, yes. Um, so the... Uh, that's They're not I, the one dividing. See, they twist that scripture. The one that's spreading the false doctrine is the, actually bringing in the division. It's not the person yeah. that's correcting the false doctrine, but that's the ploy that the devil uses to really yeah. divide the body, but... Amen. And another ploy they, they use or, or attack is they, they say, and I, I got this from top uh, people in the conservative Baptist realm, which you would think be the most uh, likely to oppose Augustine and telling me, uh, why don't you spend more time t- preaching the gospel instead of <laughs> going on and on with taking on this and that? Yeah, well, and that's Christ. what I am and, doing, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and my answer to that is, I said, well, uh, so you don't believe in obeying the Apostle Paul, who who said, "Expose the deeds of darkness, yeah, not yeah. conceal them." Yeah, yeah. And and it depends. Most of the New Testament uh, is devoted to uh, w- what are false teachings, how to identify them, what to do with them, not just outside there in the world, but what do they do when they invade your church? Uh, if you were to remove all of those. Uh, what are actually in the Old Testament does this too. Uh, the 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 false teachings and d- defining them, um, uh, it you would have a very thin Bible, Susan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very very thin. But what? Just give us a brief history, and then we're going to get into these twenty five points of why Augustine's not a Christian. But a brief history of who Augustine was, and well. He was not um, initially. Uh, he w- he was uh, he's called Saint Augustine, but uh, t- officially and technically, the Catholic Church uh, cannot canonize someone to be a saint uh, until they've performed two or more miracles. Yeah. And Augustine uh, didn't uh, did not uh, perform any miracles, but be- because he was so uh, central in the, in the, his writings and influence in, in he's hippo of is he's from is called Augustine of Hippo which yeah. is north africa where my father uh, served and did the uh, ma- maintain the medical supplies for the north african theater uh, and so but because he was in north africa uh, he was greatly influenced by the desert fathers who whose whole root system is uh, mysticism uh, from where we today get what they call mindfulness, uh, and it's really uh, it's twisted uh, meditation because the meditation in the Bible compared to meditation via mystics uh, requires that we have eyes all the way around our head uh, that we're on watch. I, was, I did guard duty in the, in the military and missile maintenance, so uh, the you you can't. T- even hardly blink your eyes that you've got to be constantly looking around and, and you're the only one on guard duty often to be the watchman on the wall, which is the Bible talks about that. And so when you're meditating, you're meditating on, on scripture with your eyes open, with eyes all the way around your head to be a vigilant watchman. So that's what you really need to do uh, if you're going to defend the faith and protect uh, the church. Uh, Paul was constantly worried about people invading the the church, even in the first century, the Ephesus church, for example, um, the Galatians, and and he said, "Who oh foolish Galatians, yeah, who has bewitched, bewitched you?" you. Yeah, uh, and so he's constantly doing that. And uh, but uh, so Augustine was was building up his reputation that way, uh, and and he he was a Catholic, and of course there's that big battle he had with the the. the Donatus, Donatus pronounce it right, um, and that the, they insisted on that the the the, uh, the priest be to qualify to do uh, uh, sacraments and prayers um, to have them be legitimate versus invalid. Um, they had to be uh, virtually sinless, uh, w- with uh, uh, and otherwise they should be disqualified. And so that caused a big battle there. And and so that, that's one of the first things that Augustine said, well, we've got to get these people in line and force them back into the 
into the Catholic Church. So he was uh, a Catholic. Didn't he convert to Catholic? Yeah, he, he, yes, he did. Um, and so that was... Uh, uh, he was going here, to get married or something. Uh, his, and he heard some children doing this song that led him to uh, to uh, the, the, the scriptures. So you'd think he, if he led them to scriptures that he would then follow the scriptures yeah. and obey them. Yeah. Uh, so that got, that's how he got rolling. Uh, he was then, converted then. He was a pagan. Yes, so, he, uh, yes, he was, he was already, but, but the thing is, um, he was converted. Uh, you think, well, what was he converted to? Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he says Christianity with, he no, said it's without not Roman Catholicism, no. he would never have converted. So, th- uh, that's what, what converted him, and of course, later on, Augustine said, "With it, uh, it that uh, Augustine is without Augustine. I mean, that's his whole foundation. That his whole testimony can be written really in uh, in Augustine doctrine and his uh, theology and what he did with uh, heretics, heretics or who they de- 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 determined were heretics, and the violence they put out later on to." Uh, to if you opposed infant baptism, that of course that goes on for hundreds of years. Uh, no, it wasn't just heresies. Uh, if you opposed that, and that, so that didn't die at all. You talk about a doctrine not dying. Um, Augustine was around 500 something, and then uh, uh, Calvin was around 1500. So you have a thousand years go by where they're opposing anybody that uh, that doesn't believe in infant baptism, even though it's found nowhere in Scripture. Uh, and and that there's found nowhere in scripture about it taking away original sin, which is I'm oh oh, oh I'm getting to some of the first points. In the, yeah. The well, Augustine then converts to Catholicism. Did he become a priest then? Yes. Uh, okay. And and then it was, uh, but he was, uh, he really not technically was ever canonized by the Catholic Church, but but they they because of, he was the really the their doctrinal church father informing so much of their theology. Uh, and of course the catechists went on and on later after long after he was gone. Uh, and he, uh, and, and so that, that's, that got the whole thing rolling, but it kept being built upon with, with one farcical doctrine. Yeah. After, after another. another. Yeah. Uh, and he was the, uh, he was one of the Catholic Church considered him one of the four ecumenical doctors and founding fathers of Roman Catholicism. So he said, well, "How can uh, how can he become a Catholic if he's already a founding father?" Well, that's uh, uh, I think maybe obvious. Hopefully. Um, so then, how how uh, of course we know the Vatican has a huge library which they keep hidden from the public, and so. In my mind, they've kind of written history for pe- for us. To, they want us, real born again Christians, to buy their history, and so then you can see that Augustine is promoted by many people and studied as an authority on Christianity. Yes, and yeah. and the uh, they will come up with count with many quotes that Augustine would quote either he yeah. quote scripture that uh, he say things that are actually true um and i that's another accusation i get when they they trot out some of the things that he said or absolutely true yeah Um, a little leaven though a little leaven exactly and if (laughs) if you're going to be satan in the master the lie he's the father of lies yeah if you're going to tell a lie and have it be believed you have to have mix some truth in there and make it seductive yeah Uh, if it's too obvious, uh, you'll people will just ditch it. Um, yes, and that's so, true. Uh, it's, you, you mix it with a lot of truth statements. And, and the fact is, when um, J- Jesus said to the Judaizers, uh, who listed all of these things they did in Jesus' name, um, um, that he said, depart from me, uh, you wicked and accursed, I never knew you. And, of course, Paul later, had, uh, the, twice eternally damned the, the the uh, Judaizers in Galatia, um, and so the argument, though, is is that well, uh, certainly the Juda, uh, Ju- Judaizers said a lot of things that are true, and one can go and actually s- search some of the uh, uh, the text that, that they wrote and a lot of their their doctrines, and you say, oh, that that's true. That even lines up with Scripture. So let's just cheer them on in this famous argument. Let's just eat out, eat the meat, and spit out the bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so I defy anybody. I said, okay, you tell me uh, 
uh, one person that uh, was eternally damned or actually na- were named were named like diatrophies uh, um, that John uh, nailed uh, is where they were actually named names uh, where and Paul didn't first say, well, why didn't you at least list the good things they said and the things that were true? And I, in other words, the, the uh, at least list list the meat. Uh, and uh, to, to, to date, after years and years of this research and writing people, um, they have not been able to come up with a reason why uh, none of the apostles nor Jesus, whoever named names uh, that that were false teachers, uh, in not in a single instance did he did he trot out all the good things that they did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or the good the works that they did. That's uh, true. Uh, and so. Uh, I, I don't know how better you can prove that, uh, Susan. Um, yeah, that's a good point, very good point. And it's the thing is, is that even if the little leaven doesn't leaven at the lump uh, today or tomorrow, um, the, the whole warning that's going to eventually leaven at the whole lump and give it 2,000 years, look what we've got. Yeah, exactly. Um, and without it being purged, uh, and yeah. so it doesn't say, well, I'll, I just I just had a cup of coffee and it only had a t- um, several drops of strychnine in it, but it would had all my favorite coffee and <laughs> sugar and cream and everything in it. Um, and then yeah. the, you come around and you you call me up for the next radio and ever where's James? Huh? Well, I had to tell you, but he passed away. Well, how did that happen? Well, he drank some coffee and didn't realize there was a couple of drops of strychnine in yeah. it. Um, well, well there's more of Paul's them teaching. though. There's more of them right now than there are of us. And that's the sad <laughs> thing is there's more people that, that believe this leaven and that, yeah, they want to argue with you about the goodness of Augustine. Okay. So then he was a priest and so he was always a priest in the Catholic Church, and then he wrote books. Is he on, did he write uh, his, this, uh, besides the City of the God? City of is God? the famous one, uh, and that's many really, volumes, isn't that many volumes? The City of yes, God. Yes, uh, it, it, depending on how you want to divide th- things up. Uh, I, I never thought of mine by books being many volumes, but uh, uh, it, so he uh, and and today even you have and like reformed um, uh, churches, you have. People exalting him, like the the church in uh, Atlanta that uh, is just going over and over, God, uh, just gobsmacked, uh, extolling and, and reviewing his city of God, uh, and but forget to tell you that well, uh, the city of God is what they say is what we're in it's right now. It's the Catholic now. Church. Yeah, so it's the kingdom now. Uh, and now, the, now they'll say, oh, of course, Jesus is coming back also, but uh, which leads me up to the whole Eucharist thing. Uh, uh, and I'd hammer away on this, where they insist that, that Jesus in transubstantiation, it didn't actually get called that until in the 1200s when the Pope uh, instituted the transubstantiation doctrine. But it was around... Uh, almost since the beginning of the church, but it was just called Eucharist uh, at the time. When, and the definition of Eucharist is 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 gift or grace or being uh, grateful. Um, and and so they they redefined and really changed what that means. But my big question was, if if Jesus Christ is uh, comes down and the priest can call him down from heaven to uh, to become the the wafer. Uh, his flesh, and then, um, uh, and then he can be in the chalice, his blood. Uh, that first of all, that if 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 that's true, and that's what the first Eucharist was, that that means Jesus was uh, eating his own flesh <laughs> and drinking his own blood while he was serving it. When he said, "This is my body, this is my blood," etc. Oh. Uh, the other problem you've got is that there's going to be thousands of. Uh, a mass is going on yeah. when Christ returns, um, and so they're going to be having Jesus Christ physically in the wafer, yeah. present in the way, not yeah. just figuratively, but literally. Uh, at, at the same time, he's descending from the clouds out of heaven, yeah. and when every eye will see him, so he's, he, he's in the sky physically. And when Arias say he's descending to the earth, he's it's not going to be uh, figurative because he's going to land on the Mount of Olives and split the the mounts in half. 
north and south and a new river created between the Mediterranean and the, the River Jordan. And there'll be a, a river there. Um, that's all literally going to happen. So here's, and he's coming down with his, all of his heaven, holy angels and uh, we, his bride, landing on, on so he's coming down, we're land on the earth with uh, glorified bodies. Uh, and at the same time, they're conducting mass uh, what, and Jesus is in the mass. So not only have that problem, but you've got, if he's in the wafer in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio, um, and he's also oh. it's the, in the wafer in, um, say, um, uh, you know, Rome somewhere, uh, that so he's, you'd have to dismember Christ for him to be in two places at the same time, let alone thousands of places at the same time, let alone they're doing that at the same time Christ is when he, he uh, ascends to the earth. Uh, and so it is beyond farcical. Uh, and it's so that's why they, they are masters of going back and forth between figurative and literal, uh, all depending on, on who they, the, the latest person that they want to deceive. Yeah, but they're very good at it. They're, they oh. even have uh, born again Christians, because I don't like to use the word Protestant. I'm not a Protestant. That's a label the Catholic Church gave us. We yes. are the real Christians, and so now everybody's. Con- I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. No, you have to be born again. You're, a, and we have to find out if you're really a Christian. But they throw that term around loosely. But you even see people that claim to be born again Christians worshiping the elements and treating it like it's a sacrament and that kind of thing. So they worshiping communion. We don't do that. No, no, and the uh, uh, the I can understand. I mean, it would be sobering. I will concede this when Jesus said, "This is my my body. Take eat." Um, uh, and with the disciples looking at each other, wait a minute, take eat. How can we do that if you're sitting there serving it, uh, and, and then you are also present? Um, so certainly, uh, I could see it raise your eyebrows, but you couldn't. Um, so after they got all done, then then Jesus would be in their tummies, um, <laughs> um, and he wouldn't be there. There, there, he'd be he'd be gone. Uh, I mean, it it, it because uh, he can't be. Uh, so it, it has to be symbolic, Susan. Of course, um, it uh, is. But it'd be one thing to just say, "Well, I got that doctor, and uh, maybe I missed a missed the boat there." But but they took that and then uh, merci- mercifully tortured. Um, whether it's the Inquisition, the conquistadors, uh, and the the, the forcing uh, for, it wasn't the forcing them to have the infant baptism first, but but then uh, the, uh, the the sacrament later were. Uh, as you know, is subsequent as a sacrament, but uh, the the uh, it's it's one thing to make to turn it into, and again I said that his his main theme is that he weaponized Christianity, and the Apostle Paul uh, it never did that. It he did that when he before he was converted, uh, and the only time he did it when he. Uh, he uh, eternally damned the Judaizers, but but he didn't do anything to them while they were alive. That was just their eternal destiny after they, they passed away. Uh, but he never uh, did anything anything remotely resembling what Calvin and Augustine did. Uh, and, and it's like I, I said, if you're going to at least uh, exalt these two guys, can't you at least tell your congregation and those that you're counseling, at least give them the list of all of the things that he said and believed and did, not saying things that James said that he said. Yes, but absolutely. That, but I quote, I give the citation yeah. where the quotes came from. Um, I can at least tell them that, uh, and, th- and hence the list. Um, and, of course, I come up with the list, and I, even then I get can't you just go preach the gospel and get people saved and not? Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. I, I remember years ago when that movie came out, Chariots of Fire, and everybody was, oh, it's a Christian movie. It's such a good movie. So I'm watching the movie, and there's men taking a shower, and then all of a sudden you see a naked men's rear end in the movie. Oh, boy. So is that a Christian movie? So I said to my friend, no, that's not a Christian movie. There was an, a, a man who showed his naked rear end. He said, 
oh, why do you have to ruin everything? <laughs> and, and, don't you, and Susan would say back, is there any chance that the, that, that movie could be rated, not R, uh, if uh, you just removed that one scene that served absolutely no purpose? It served. It just, they just had to put it in there to insult us. And then to say, yeah. okay, we accept your movies. We it, just like the Passion of the Christ. I think they they showed a naked rear end in that one too. We're supposed to just buy everything and and uh, accept it. It goes by so fast though that you can miss it. But well, I'm glad it goes by fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all, we we've talked about probably three or four of the 25 reasons. And so we have the fifth reason, but the fourth reason was that he defied the warning of Apostle Peter with his private interpretation of scripture. And he didn't even know the Greek language. So he didn't know Greek, Augustine. Yes. And the, uh, uh, had he had any help at all, at least he could have, uh, I mean, some of these, you don't, he, whether whatever language is is in, it's crystal clear. Uh, but in but only in Greek do we have uh, the four four main words for the word love. Uh, and if you read those just in English, uh, they uh, you know agape, phileo, storge, and eros. Uh, the, you, the, it comes crystal clear. Although eros is not in the scripture, but it's implied. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, imagine saying, um, "For God so eros the world that He gave His only begotten Son." No. you'd you'd be thrown out of the church, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and uh, because they both are the word love, for God so loved, yeah. so which love though? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's pretty critical that uh, uh, you get straight which love is being uh, is is. Discuss. That's why the Greek language couldn't uh, come along at a better time to uh, to have the scripture written, and, and then of course Hebrew for the Old Testament. But the uh, so that that's very very important, and and you would get you wouldn't get so mixed up with your eisegesis, uh, and then and then all of a sudden who needs eisegesis, which is you know. Line by line, precept by precept, yeah. literal interpretation, unless it's absolutely clear that they're using it figuratively, uh, and then they 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 actually define um, the image, what it means, and it's symbolic of. Uh, but if you just go down the, the there's a fork in a road, eisegesis versus exegesis. Uh, eisegesis is you read into it whatever you subjectively want it to be, which paves the way for for m m mysticism, the meditation, and I I call it, uh, it you know it, it's not meditation as in the, being on guard duty, but it's an altered state of consciousness, and it, and the thing is is an out of body experience and all of those things. Well, you can get that with LSD, but you got to pay money to get LSD. Uh, to get into these altered states of consciousness. And then you can read, and once you go down that road, you can start reading all kinds of things into it subjectively, whatever you want it to mean. Uh, but then when Peter, their so-called first pope, could not make it more clear that every Christian is a saint, every Christian is a priest and king, at least we will, will be when we reign. Um, and, and, and so that means if I'm a priest uh, that I can baptize um, I could uh, take someone's uh, confession, uh, and the thing is, is that the if if I'm also a priest, but uh, you didn't need to have that even be in Greek, uh, uh, Susan, to have that be so clear, uh, and yet they ma make him the first pope, and uh, I, I can make a whole long list of of how Peter would be marching down to the. Vatican, and with his list, it would be much longer than mine of where they went off the rails. I said, <laughs> at least if you could use somebody else's name, please don't use yeah, my name. Yeah, please don't use and mine. If yeah, you bother to read my epistles, yes. uh, you would see clearly without even having to worry about how do I read something into this, yeah. but it's clearly stating, um, and if they just blow it off and redefine it, um, yeah. and 
and you, you're, you're, when you're baptized as an infant without believing, then you, you become a member of the church. Uh, uh, well, last I checked that every, all the way throughout Scripture, you believe first, and then they were baptized. Yeah, right. The baptism didn't do anything except, the, uh, I mean, it glorifies the Lord, so that's important. But in terms of your own salvation, uh, yeah, it doesn't. They did. Yeah, it doesn't. And, prove. and I had a friend that was uh, served. He's an American, but he served in the military in Israel in the '90s. And he went to visit the uh, Jerusalem, and they showed him all the mikvah pools where uh, the, the new believers would have been baptized when Peter preached his first sermon, and three thousand were saved. Uh, and, and and he couldn't have even all the eleven apostles that were present with him. Uh, couldn't have baptized all three thousand in the in the day. They'd have to get no, some. No. But guess what? Um, once once anyone was baptized, um, well, even if they weren't baptized yet, um, th- uh, all of them were now priests. Uh, and and how would Peter know? Oh, hello. He because he wrote it in his epistles. Said that now that they're priests, so they fully authorized to baptize the other people that are becoming believers. Um, and so. Uh, they all got baptized, and they showed the pools, and I've got pictures of them in the book uh, that he sent me, the actual pictures of the of the baptismal pools. They didn't call them baptism pools. Uh, they call them, in Jewish, uh, mikvah, uh, they're cleansing pools. Uh, and and so the, the, you have the, the literal archaeological evidence of what was done, the order and sequence it was done, when they, they preached the sermon, then they, they, they listened, they heard, and they repented, uh, and then they were baptized. The sequence, uh, it could not be more clear in the book of Acts, and then, of course, uh, in his, uh, Peter's epistles. And so if, if you had nothing else but the book of Acts, the chapter 2, and chapter 4, and Peter's epistles, you have everything you need to demolish the principality of Roman Catholicism, Susan. Yes. Amen. That's okay. all. I'm, I'm, the others are great, too, because all Scripture is profitable uh, for instruction and perfecting Yes, us. yes, yes, um, of course. So the... Uh, Point five here. You're up to five. Yeah. Um, Purgatory her- and work salvation and sanctification. <clears throat> yes. Uh, it's a doctrine of non-justification by faith alone, uh, thereby defying Christ's own word on the cross by teaching it is finished uh, in their minds in Augustine. Uh, uh, so it isn't finished. Uh, th- now they'll argue both sides. They'll say it's finished. They'll quote it. Uh, but then if it's finished, uh, and, and as soon as you believe and uh, that you, uh, the Holy Spirit seals you for forever. Uh, so you don't need to get sealed over and over again. You're sealed once. At the upon, upon belief, uh, and so Augustine could have prevented indulgences from ever gaining traction um, in Roman Catholicism by renouncing purgatory as a myth, uh, so that there would never have been a place to spring saints from. Um, and both the apostles Paul and Peter renounced these as myths and fables, yet Augustine promotes them. He promoted uh, that the doctrine of purgatory was a doctrine at his during his time. Uh, <clears throat> apparently so. The I uh, I've got to check when it first got, um, uh, but it must have been in place for him to have addressed it. Uh, oh, okay. Then. And uh, that's a great question, Susan. Uh, but the the uh, and thing is, is that uh, ironically, Roman Catholicism teaches that that uh, that. It, uh, you either go to heaven, hell, or purgatory when you die. But if you do make it to purgatory, eventually everyone in purgatory will, will eventually get to heaven. Yeah. It's just depending on their sentence. Yeah. On, in the, How in, long you have to be cl- go through the cleansing. Yes, and it, it eventually it will, in their minds, purgatory will be empty, and it will be a place that Satan will never be in. Uh, uh, <laughs> and and so, but it wasn't enough for Augustine to have them punished. Uh, to get to heaven after they they die, but he he had to have them tortured uh, while they're still alive, um, and and so uh, uh, on it goes. So uh, and 
as James says in one eight, they're double minded and unstable in all their ways. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, I w- in the modern v- vernacular, I would call it waffling. And so the, uh, the I um, now become a member of the First Church of Waffle. Uh, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> well, there, there's many of those. OK, <laughs> yeah. number six. He was an amillennialist and dominionist. Yes, uh, and the uh, the amillennialism, to some extent, people thought died away, but um, it went on a long time. Uh, and that is, there's two ways of reading its meaning: uh, uh, a millennium, meaning no millennium. Um, uh, the other is that it's. Uh, it's meaning no thousand years because millennium means a thousand, but but on a more figurative level, there's uh, it's used as the term to describe the, the kingdom of God, which helped pave the way to, as you well know, uh, kingdom now theology that we're already in. And somebody said, oh, that is isn't that's brand new, isn't it? I said, no, it isn't. Wow. Uh, uh, Augustine helped get that thing uh, launched, launched as well, um, and of course uh, C.S. Lewis. Uh, and the whole idea of uh, uh, penal substitutionary atonement uh, is that the uh, what is necessary to appease, appease Father's wrath. Uh, Christ alone shed blood. There's nothing that we can do, uh, punishment on earth, purgatory, yeah. or whatever, yeah. uh, that's going to finish the job when it was already finished. So either Jesus Christ is, is telling the truth. Or it's a lie when he said it is finished. It's either finished or it isn't finished. Yes, too. yes. Um, and and thank God for that because I mean I I couldn't work for a, a million years to pay off the Lord just for the blessing of my wife that He brought to me and our daughter and now a granddaughter um, is is so that that's just the the blessings. Uh, let alone uh, pay the Lord back. Uh, and, and how do you calculate uh, what kind of punishment and how much time in purgatory for this sin versus that sin? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, because the, to me, I said, you know, I would just have to be in purgatory forever. Forever, forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, because I'm, I'm, I'll never be good enough. <laughs> yes. Uh, and oh, and you, you asked about dominionism. Uh, that's That's really... Where the the argument and the that the uh, the church has not taken over the earth yet, uh, but but the idea is that uh, b- by the end of time that the church will uh, take over the entire earth, uh, and church and state will be merged again. Oh together. yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, the seven mountain mandate too. Yeah, there you go. And and the th- thing is, is that they want to restore so much of the. The order in the church state, even though the Jesus warned about the yeah. the uh, the leaven of Herod, yeah, which is he really did. effective emerging church and state, yeah. um, and there's and that he did have a theocracy with Israel, but that was only that that nation country, uh, and it, it will again be, or I guess a theocracy when Christ returns, when and Christ it'll be a larger returns. Israel. Yeah. Uh, but but the, ultimately that. There's, there's, dominionism will never happen except in the negative sense of, a, of a on one, one world government, one world religion. Yeah. Uh, that then you'll have a, a, a dominionism, but it'll be a satanic version, and then Christ will bring that to an end. And then the only theocracy that we should be signing up for is the theocracy that we, Christ uh, retu- sets up His kingdom on earth when He lands on the Mount of Olives. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, anything else is a counterfeit, Susan. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, well, apostolic. That. Yeah, apostolic succession is number seven. Number seven. Um, well, the uh, uh, I write here. Uh, well, it's well known that they believe that Peter was the first apostle, and that, that they there had to be a successor, and they have their their list of of those throughout the ages that succeeded. Uh, him as an individual apostle, and of course they they have him uh, call him the Pope, uh, not and so that's uh, the but they only have one at a time, uh, whereas in the initially we had twelve apostles, eleven 
minus or you know minus Judas, and then uh, yeah. but it's restored to twelve with Paul, um, and they did signs and wonders uh, for a season, uh, and so my question is that. Uh, if apostolic succession is, is is true, then there we should be having twelve over and over again. Number two, um, where's all the signs and wonders and miracles um, that they're they're doing um, without end? Uh, and then uh, they have the Pope is even more important in a sense than than uh, uh, being an apostle, Susan, and that yeah. is the vicar of Christ being that which is a, uh, by definition is substitute so they have the apostles never claimed and never were substitutes for Christ no uh, no so they've they've outranked even the apostles so they contradict themselves they want apostles to succeed but then they have to have another Jesus so is it a G, another Jesus or is it another apostle help me out susan <laughs> well it's interesting here that you say that but Baptists and many conservative Christians believe sign gifts ended with the apostles. So then, why are so many Baptist Augustinians? <laughs> to, to say nothing about uh, Baptists that uh, uh, the uh, Baptists that well, they call them Reformed Baptists, if they believe in Calvin, but still, uh, 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 but oppose uh, infant baptism. Uh, but still, uh, it's. Uh, if you're a Baptist, they they insist that you believe first, and then you uh, are immersed yeah, uh, you get in water for Baptist. the Sabbath. Yeah. And and so the uh, they they just uh, it, it it's an oxymoron, if not moron, uh, Susan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, uh, and we attended for a season, uh, and they uh, they are told. Full-on reformed uh, Baptist, and they believe everything in Calvin, uh, all of his doctrines, tulip, etc. Uh, they just discard infant baptism, and and they even believe it or not, not all of them, but many discard the idea that that we the the church has replaced Israel. They still believe in Israel and that it'll be a nation and they should be defended and supported. Uh, uh, so uh, th th it's splintered a lot, uh, um, but they, they hold those two doctrines. But the the thing is that th th again, those are not Susan. Those are not peripheral doctrines. Uh, their found uh, infant baptism is foundational. Uh, is so much so the uh, that otherwise Calvin would not have uh, had uh, Servetus burned at the stake. It was a Servetus also didn't believe in the, the the Trinity, but one of the main reasons he was still have been executed was the, for opposing infant baptism. And, and he was very civilized about it. He wasn't causing riots like you see with Hamas defenders in uh, uh, f uh, free Palestine from the river to the sea. Um, I don't know how you could get more deceived, and I don't think a lot of them have a clue uh, it, that there's going to be a river to the sea, all right, but it's going to be... Uh, the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, but it's going to even more than that. And get, guess what? I hate to break it to these guys, but there's not going to be just a West Bank of uh, uh, Israel. There's going to be an East Bank that's in Jordan that's, that's going to be part of greater Israel. Uh, so they would be shocked to hear that. Uh, but uh, it, this on it goes. But we, we should be surprised that uh, God's going to send a grand delusion to deceive even the elect if it were possible. And the, um, they're, they're just the Isaiah prophesied calling evil good and good evil. And here we got trans. And the only trans I'm interested in is being transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Uh, and the uh, if Jesus, I thought he said something like, uh, well, male and female, he created him. And so uh, there's not going to be, uh, if, if people just marry their own sex, um, it would only take a maybe a hundred years, and there'd be no population left. No, on the there earth. wouldn't be anybody, you know. But the uh, at one time, really, the Baptist Church. Wow, when you went to a Baptist church, you heard a salvation message, and uh, things have changed. Th things have changed so rapidly, right before our eyes. Uh, so, okay, we already talked about number eight. And so number nine, coercive torture and terrorism. Well, the the, uh, the the key here is that not that torture and terrorism hadn't gone on for the first 500 years 
of the church uh, uh, history in Israel, of course. Uh, it's, it's, and of course, they were, uh, it, when Rome surrounded Israel and defeated and then the temples destroyed in 70 AD, uh, there was plenty of terrorism and torture and things then, but it was not done. That was not done because it, isn't this a great Christian doctrine? Um, but guess what? When the Roman Catholic Church came along later uh, uh, in the Crusades, uh, they went to Israel and rounded up uh, many of the Jews, herded them into synagogues, locked the door, and then burned it, the synagogues to the ground, um, thinking because the, the churches replaced Israel, and and as Calvin and Augustine would say, these these people are so accursed that they, you couldn't do God a better favor by, by burning these people to the ground. Um, so that uh, is uh, what part of the weaponizing of Christ. So when he... If Augustine had uh, had even an ounce of, of uh, agape love or just evangelize the Jews to bring them into the faith that Paul, the first place Paul went to in every city he went to was the synagogue. Yeah. And that was on Saturday, by the way. Yeah. Uh, talk about, oh, it doesn't count if it's not on Sunday. I never uh, did that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, Most the, uh, of us have never done that. <laughs> So the uh, 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 so it's it's uh, it, it's it's it, and the thing is that he he went into great detail of designing all of the kind of the punishments uh, that would be exercised um, that he felt that that you could really uh, take it out on even Christians. It wasn't just who they call heretics, but this was yeah. what, this version of church discipline too. Uh, um, and I'd feel f uh, safer with Freddy Krueger um, than I would in the presence of Augustine yeah. if I dare cross him on a bunch of these uh, points and doctrines. Uh, but the, so it wasn't a matter of that he just, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, weaponized Christianity. Uh, it's, it's that he uh, went through great detail in, uh, and then during the Inquisition, uh, the... Uh, the the torture methods were even more perfected, uh, and, and of course Calvin did a lot to uh, try to copy the same formula. So it wasn't just um, it was more it wasn't just this vague thing. It was actual literal blueprints uh, for how to torture, uh, and even uh, how to execute uh, the doctrines that the Germans and the Catholic, the, whether they're Lutheran or Catholic. Uh, clung to in their foundation, uh, it, 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 their view of the Jews. It wasn't like that just came out of thin air or that was some kind of brand new doctrine, but maybe I'll sign up for it. Uh, that, that, that was a foundation by which Hitler used to the utmost. Um, uh, so he didn't have to do much to, to get all the, those Germans to sign up uh, for what he did to the Jews, uh, had them in their hip pocket already. Uh, well, the thing is, too, that the uh, we forget, uh, as the body of Christ and the real Christians, the born-again believers, we forget history. We should never forget history. We don't cozy up to Calvinism. We don't cozy up to the Catholic Church. Even for this, that they killed us, tortured us there there was a, a youtube video that you recommended about and you can see it i couldn't even watch it because it was so horrible the instruments of torture of the inquisition yes. horrible it was horrible so i don't care what they they come with their smiles and they're welcoming us in and and we say no we don't want any part of it they blame they blame Christians for the Crusades. They were not Christians. They were, no born again believer goes out and starts murdering people. We just don't do it, and it's it's horrible to be labeled that way too. And and the uh, uh, again, like I said earlier in the uh, our conversation, Susan, that to have could they at least have um, uh, be honest. 
I mean, even Hebrews, all the heroes of the faith, you read chapter 11, um, every single one of those heroes of the faith fell off the turnip truck before they were saved and after they were saved, uh, they uh, messed up. Um, and yet they're the heroes of the faith. Uh, so the so what that proves, though, is that even with the heroes of the faith, the Bible is very, very honest, uh, showing the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, but that is not happening with Calvin and Augustine. Um, they're just bringing out, well, actually, they're bringing out a bunch of blatantly false things that they're promoting, too. But, I mean, uh, they uh, they you don't hear uh, any of the... And I even sent some of those quotes to a bunch of pastors, scholars, and, and some of them uh, were aware of them. Uh, but I haven't heard anybody tell me that, yes, they, they what I stated on your radio show, uh, did you read any of them to your congregation, to the students in your uni- university, or, the, or the, how about uh, Calvin College that, that, you're, that you named after? Calvin, that you named your college after, and Augustine, uh, St. Augustine, we have a town, city that, in Florida by that yeah. name, uh, and and so I, I said, okay, um, I'm not saying I'm going to agree with uh, saying I'm going to sign up for Augustine because of true things that he said, uh, it's just that, that at least the scripture uh, doesn't uh, mince words, uh, and of course, all of those that, that did foul up. Uh, They repented afterwards. Uh, uh, Hopefully, uh, I think every single one did. (laughs) And, and so to at least say, say all of these things. uh, And, and the thing is, with all this movement now to to have women get more rights, and uh, still more than they uh, have now. um, uh, And I said, well, then, then so but then then you wouldn't certainly want to go back to what Calvin and uh, Augustine. I didn't even quote Calvin's uh, what he said about Jews and uh, and <clears throat> Jews and women, uh, j- except to say that in a sense he he said the same things, and then he, he confirmed that when he said that his whole foundation and testimony is based on the total teachings of uh, Augustine. So oh. so if so, whatever I read earlier in the show, uh, I I guarantee that. Uh, Calvin stood with those statements about Jews and women, and the uh, and yet the the silence is deafening uh, in yeah. all these denominations. Yeah, I just don't get it. The uh, I think something happens where they they their mysticism leads to being mystified, yeah, leads that's to being true. Uh, being uh, out of your mind. Yeah. Um, uh, and and vain yeah. imaginations. Yeah. Uh, but didn't Paul say we're supposed to cast down vain strongholds of imagination? Well, you're so right. And <laughs> we hear many times, if you're watching these so-called Christian channels, you hear these Bible scholars, and they're quoting Augustine. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why are well, you quoting Augustine? Time. Focus on the family. Tim um, see, Walker, I think was his name, that... Uh, Pat that, Robertson uh, used to quote Augustine too. Yeah, and of course Rick Warren, um, and of course Rick Warren's Global Peace Plan. Uh, it would make a lot of sense to Augustine uh, because uh, it's a basically it's a dominionist. Uh, the church takes over the earth uh, kind of idea. Yeah, uh, and that's going to be peace. And it, and he even has Muslims in his Global Peace Plan, um, but. Uh, I hate to break it to him, but uh, there's not going to be any Muslims in Jesus Christ. Global peace plan, there's not even going to be a single Muslim nation uh, that's going to be that much transformed uh, on the earth. And now toward the end of the millennium, there's going to be one break loose from Satan, and he's going to round up some some people toward the, that very end, and then he's the the end for him forever. But uh, still, <laughs> though, it it is a... And Hinduism, and I mean, all these. Do you think God's going to allow these thousands of idols of Mary, uh, of Jesus, of uh, Buddha in Thailand, where my my son has he's visiting back to America right now? But he was that's where he's been living the last few years, and and that's eighty some percent of the Thailand is is Buddhist. Yeah, and uh, and it's virtually. I mean, we we see it off in the distance in America. 
but we don't see it in the distance in the sense that that uh, mindfulness uh, is taking over uh, counseling, and it is based on uh, uh, Hindu and, and Buddhism, uh, and it's that form of uh, meditation that's Eastern. And uh, but the, there's not going to be any of these statues. Uh, if if I think God was serious when He said, "Thou shalt not have any graven images before Me," and it wasn't just images like Buddha, but it would include that. But He said in, in, in Deuteronomy, He's talking about I- images in heaven. So that could uh, any, anything that's in heaven, which would include Mary, uh, Jesus, any yeah, of the saints. Yeah. It's fair today is that you know a handsome dude, uh, Charles Atlas or whatever, uh, uh, Schwarzenegger, <laughs> and. Uh, the uh, Credible Hulk. Uh, that it. So if that's true, um, all of the paintings you see of them, they have Jesus. Jesus is not going to marry any of us twice. Once, as, a, as if you're a woman, as a nun, and then again when he returns yeah. to catch us up in the air. So that more, more contradictions, and then to say all these bad things about women that Calvin and Augustine did, and yet uh, then then why why ex- are is it okay then to have nuns to have the equivalent of a monastery, but they're for their nunneries instead? And that and if women are only good for giving birth to children, but they don't do that as a nun. Last I checked. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not supposed to, but there's it's been, been there's it's been cases. Been known to happen. It's right? been known to happen. Okay, seventeen mysticism and Gnosticism. Well, the Gnosticism. Um, it's it's really kind of like where we got all of the Greek mythology uh, and Greek uh, uh, religion that Paul actually refuted uh, in the Bible. He didn't call it technically Gnosticism, but that's what it was. And then the uh, and then the mysticism is is really uh, where that in these altered st- this, it's this type of prayer where you can go in the altered state of consciousness. And, and and get all these revelations and to become a better Christian and get all these these insights and know the future and whatever. Just about maybe some of these links that are in this article. Well, by the time we do another interview, Susan, I will for sure have this posted on uh, Steve's site. Uh, his yeah, then we'll 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 offer it to people. That uh, he'll, he'll be happy to to have that and know yeah, that. Yeah, that would be good. I'll even email him shortly and, and uh, tell him that's what's what's happening. And it'll, uh, um, who knows, maybe his church will grow, but not to church growth movement formula. But <laughs> no, I mean, you know, God grows the church daily. We just preach the gospel and people come. It's amazing, really, how uh, God sends people. Even to my radio broadcast, I don't really. I never really did much advertising or anything. I just started talking, and and God brought the congregation. So, wow. yeah, the Lord blesses uh, and honors our labor, and uh, we thank Him for it. We thank God for the listeners. But anyway, how can people reach you if they wanted to reach you, or email you, or see your website or your other books that you have um, available? Well, that speaking of my other books. Um, the uh, I have you both of my books exposing Rick Warren and his global peace plan and his purpose driven church and his shape personality profile, which is based on Carl Jung's occult that he got from a spirit guy named Philemon. Um, anyway, they they were at one point in you know uh, a solid book format, now they're just but they're totally free now online that you can read and access. Um, if you typed um, Rick Warren, Purpose Driven Life, uh, and comma my name into Google search, then it should come up and both you'll see both the books you can free, freely read. Uh, and, you know, and then, uh, of course, my, my documentary on, on uh, Rick Warren's shape personality profile was published in two conservative Christian theological journals. So it was highly reviewed and recommended. Uh, that's they're also in uh, one of the books, so that's also free. But in terms of me directly, uh, that that's really uh, doesn't have all of my theology in there, except indirectly through my songs. But uh, my Eagle Masterworks Productions is where my music 
uh, and where it shows you there where you can uh, write me as well. Um, or you can write Susan, um, um, and Susan will then have uh, that much bigger of a fan base. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, my Eagle Eagle Mass no no spaces Eagle Masterworks Productions dot com uh, is James Sunquist uh, music site and all the reviews I've had from uh, from Pat Boone on and by the way Pat Boone uh, just turned ninety and wow. his uh, uh, his famous song Exodus we just did in the worship service at Beth Mac- Messiah Congregation on last Saturday. And uh, uh, we had a, a brother that we've known more than 30 years sing the, the lead for Exodus because he wrote the, Pat wrote the, the words to the Exodus. Someone else did the music. Uh, and it, as you know, became famous and it was also a movie. Uh, yeah, and that yeah, go, yeah. That was, that was a back a long song. time. Yeah. And, and, and it's uh, uh, talk about this land is mine. Uh, could not be a better statement than what we're seeing now happening to what they're trying to do to, 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 to destroy Israel and Islam, to take Israel, not just the Jews off the face of the map, but remove them as a nation from the land. Uh, but God has a, is, he's got in them a big surprise in store uh, that he is not, that he owns the land and he gives it to whom he chooses. And that, uh, and so the, he's, going to get the last uh, uh, what do you call it the last say in the matter <laughs> he always does he always, he always does, does. <laughs> amen well, well well susan it's a, a light both fellowshipping with you yeah, as well as uh, feeding on his word and and, and just be rejoicing uh, two or more gathered and uh it's just been an ec- ecstatic uh, time and i just may the lord bless and keep you uh and keep you healthy to do keep doing more shows amen Man, we'll just keep yeah. on trucking, as they used to say. <laughs> All right, James, yeah. thanks so much. I appreciate you coming on. I really do. And, and I think uh, that, being thank a you. part of our Hopefully broadcast. Hopefully we're getting less and less uh, uh, prints of the power of the air uh, <laughs> getting in the way of my Skype. That is a good way to put it. That is a good way to put it. No, nobody knows how we when we're trying to get this thing on the air. Oh my! But I think we got it figured out now. Yeah, I, we, I think we do, and, uh, and it so sounds just, really good. It sound came out really good. Oh, that's great! And so I just want to say, um, I storge agape and phileo you, uh, <laughs> but not not phileo you. <laughs> not that's an F. <laughs> that's right, phileo. <laughs> oh, well, you're a blessing. You Thank you so, so much. And thank you for the invitation as well again, oh, Susan. Anytime. We'll, we'll talk again soon. God bless. All right. Bye bye. All right, everybody, that is our show for today. So many blessings and such good word today. We're, we've been blessed, and uh, we can say that our brother James Sunquist preached a good sermon, right? So please check him out there online, and the next time he comes on, we'll offer that um, document. It's quite a lengthy document, but if you wanted to know more about Augustine and his doctrines, and there's many links on this document. There's even some YouTube videos you can go and look at. But we we need to know these things so that we don't revere the wrong people and quote the wrong people as Christians when they're really not. But the most important thing today is, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Maybe you say, I I don't know Jesus. How can I meet the Savior? And it's simple. It's simple. Salvation is simple. You ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you. Ask him to come into your life and to change your life. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And Jesus said in the third chapter of John that you must be born again. First you're born of your mother, and then you must be born again by the Spirit of God. Jesus was born of a virgin. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And he ascended into heaven 
and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he said, I'm coming again, no matter what happens on this earth, I'm coming again. Only Jesus can give you peace and joy. He is the Prince of Peace. Ask him to come into your life today and repent. He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God bless you today. Be the name of the Lord. He is my.